Hello, everybody. Uh, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Uh, pleasure to be here and thank you for coming. My name is Tom Brand, um, and we also have here Alon. Um, I'm a product manager and a researcher in Starkware, um, and currently I work on Starknet. And today we're going to share with you uh, the greatest and latest about Starknet. First of all, what it is, uh, where, what we have today, and then the most interesting part is Alon will demonstrate us how to actually write contracts, deploy them, interact with them, send messages between L1 and L2, everything which is live today in Robsten and you can also do by yourself. Um, perfect, so before I dive into my presentation, I want to first uh, start with a story, a prologue, which turns out to be a true story. So I guess most of you are familiar with the DYDX. Um, if you're not, then first of all, go check them out. The, it's a very, very nice uh, application and very nice UX. Uh, but basically what they do is that they um, uh, allow perpetual trading with the synthetic assets. And like every synthetic assets, you need uh, a good, reliable, professional, fast and cheap Oracle prices, which turn out to be in that case, Chainlink. Uh, now, up until recently, the YDX operated on L1, which meant that, first of all, their fees were high and sometimes, uh, depends when, were very, very high. And also that they had to compromise on some of the functionality that they wanted to give to their users. Um, and for example, one of them is how frequent are Oracle updates in their system? So on L1, since it's uh, not, it's quite expensive, Oracle updates uh, for the synthetic asset price were done approximately every 15 minutes. Now, on April, three months ago, the YDX moved to work over StarkX. Uh, StarkX is our layer two ZK rollup application, which allows uh, uh, scalability trading, which is, this is not the topic of this, this uh, talk today, but it is a nice example on what ZK rollups can do. So once the YDX moved to uh, StarkX, first of all, uh, they were able to, to achieve a cost reduction of between 100 to 200x compared to L1. And not only that, they were also able to increase their margin uh, for the trades from 10x to 25x. Um, and they were able to do so because they were able to include an Oracle price transaction between every trade. Meaning if before on L1, uh, the prices were being updated every 15 minutes, now the prices are updated before every trade. Um, and what I wanna share with you uh, today on, on, on our talk and later on the demo is, is Starknet. And I'm very excited to, to talk about Starknet because Starknet will allow any developer or, or you or any uh, infrastructure uh, supplier to, to, to achieve this kind of, I don't know, amazing story uh, to your applications. Um, so let's dive into Starknet and try to understand how, um, how this fit uh, was possible. Right, so Starknet, what is Starknet? Starknet is a decentralized permissionless ZK rollup. Well, we actually don't like the term ZK rollup because there's nothing, zero knowledge about those kind of systems. So the actual terms is validity rollup. Uh, so Starknet is a validity rollup which offers uh, um, an Ethereum-like state, which is as secure as Ethereum and as scalable as you saw in the previous story. Um, so what does it actually mean? It means it's, a, it's an L2 on top of Ethereum. It means that uh, developers are able to write smart contracts. They are able to deploy them on the system. Those contracts support general computation. And they can also interact with each other, align composability. So this is Starknet in one sentence. And, and if I want to, to, to say like in one slide, why Starknet? Then the beauty of Starknet is that it allows us to offer scalability while still preserving the same security as L1 and the same decentralization. And I want to try to explain why is that? And through that to explain what we saw with the YDX and Chainlink example. So first of all, the security um, in ZK rollup, it's very simple. Uh, state updates, or as we uh, know them in Ethereum blocks, are, can only be accepted if a valid uh, proof 
attesting to the validity of the state transition was also verified on L1. This simple fact gives us the, basically the security of L1 because an invalid transition just cannot happen um, because the L1 verified a, a proof to it. Now, once we have this security, I want to, to explain why the scalability of starkness is, 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 is so large. So as you may understand, the ability to uh, include as many transactions as possible in one proof um, mean directly what is the amount of scalability that we can provide. Um, and StarkNet relies on, on the stock provers, which are already in production for almost uh, two years. And they turn out to be the most powerful provers in the world um, that allows us to include uh, uh, the most transactions in a proof um, than any other competitor in the market. Um, and the second factor that allows us to, to provide scalability is the second part of the, of the scalability formula of Ezekiel Rollup. And this is the, our on-chain data um, footprint. And let's try to take a look from the on-chain data perspective. So if we are a dev developer, what is the goal of the on-chain data from, from our perspective? The goal of it is the security. Uh, we need it uh, to be able to reconstruct the same the, the state of the system. Um, so what data do I need in order to do that? In traditional blockchains or in any other uh, scaling solution like uh, sidechains or optimistic collapse, um, since every node is required to re-execute the state uh, and re-execute all the transactions, the data that I need in order to uh, reconstruct the state is the full transactions, meaning every transaction that I need to, that I want to include in the system also needs to be posted on L1. Um, in Zika rollup, since we don't require anyone to uh, re-execute the state, but only to verify a very succinct proof, uh, the only data that I need in order to reconstruct the state is the state diff, right? So now we understand why we are able to uh, take all those uh, uh, Oracle price transactions and, and have them generally as free transactions in the system. And this is because an Oracle price transaction actually only change one storage, right? It only change uh, the, the, the price. So the effect of one Oracle price transactions or 1K or 10K Oracle price transactions um, has the same effect on the state difference at the end of the block. And this minimal data leads to a much higher scale than any other scaling solution. Now I go back and I said that why we offer scalability and why we offer security. And I want to also uh, explain why ZK rollups are the only solution that actually provide the ability for every participant in the network to verify the state. And for that, I want to look from the full node perspective. So as a full node, what is my role? I want to be able to, to hold the state. I want to be able to uh, keep in sync with the state as the system progress. And, and what does that require for me? Again, it's exactly the same argument that I made before. So if, I, if I'm required to re-execute the state, the requirement for me as a full node grows linearly as the throughput of the system increase. Um, so if I am able to keep up with the system when there is 10 TPS, when uh, uh, the system will go up to 1K TPS, I won't be able to keep up and I will need a much bigger machine. But this is not the case with ZK Rollup. Because if I only need to apply state updates, then the requirement for me as a full node are much, much, much lower. And it actually means that even as the system, the, the layer or the network, sorry, uh, grow and actually uh, fulfill its, 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 its goal of being a scalability solution, uh, full nodes are still able to keep up with the system and, and, and the system is still, still decentralized. So as we said, why StarkNet? Because it is scalability solution that offers, as you as you saw today on mainnet, uh, between 100 to 200x cost reduction, uh, while still uh, maintaining the security of L1 and the, the decentralization of L1. Okay. So I spent the last 10 minutes talking about nice stories and what I, what StarkNet can 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 bring us. But I mean, what do we actually have? Right? Is it is it uh, a Twitter deployment, is it mainnet, where are we? So good that you're asking. 
Uh, today we're at StarkNet Alpha. Uh, and StarkNet Alpha is our way of sharing the latest state of our development with, with, the, with the developers in the ecosystem. Um, and StarkNet Alpha is, is a work in progress which is deployed on Robsten since mid-June. And we constantly update it with our latest uh, uh, state of development. So what can we do today with the StarkNet Alpha? First of all, you can write smart contracts, you can deploy them. Um, they all live in the same state. Uh, you can send transactions to those contracts. Those contracts can send messages to L1 and L1 contracts can, can send messages to the L2 contracts. And the beauty is that, is that everything in this system, in, in, everything in, in the system is, is proved off chain and verified on chain, meaning all the state transitions are not just some nice uh, state and nice uh, programming language that allows us to, to, to write contracts, but it is actually proved and verified on, on chain on each state update. And also the, the, the data is published on chain. Now we have a growing and expanding tooling. Uh, currently we have a web IDE, a CLI, uh, a block explorer, and you will be able to see everything in uh, <laughs> five minutes when alone will demonstrate it. So this is what we have today. Um, but we also have an, an expanding ecosystem of external teams that work together with us to, to, to make starting the reality. Um, uh, so we're working with the with the Aragon team, the Turbogeth team, which is uh, at least uh, the numbers shows the, the, the most efficient uh, full node client that Ethereum has today. So they are working on, uh, on, on the full node infrastructure uh, for StarkNet, and it is a pleasure to work with them. Uh, we're also working with the Nethermind team. Um, they built uh, and are still expanding our block explorer and are also working on an, a compiler from EVM to Cairo. Um, and actually, they, they hopefully, yeah, anyway, I, want, I don't want to, to spoil any surprises, but they made a, a, huge, a, a, a huge achievement on, on that front and we'll share it uh, once the dust settled from the, from the London fork update. Uh, we also have another team working on, on, on a compiler from uh, a higher level language to, to, to Cairo. Um, and lastly, um, we're on the verge of, of having Open Zeppelin starting to work on contract standardization to open uh, to StartNet. And there are many more that hopefully we'll be able to, to share soon. Uh, what's my time? I have two minutes. Okay, we're fine. Um, and I, I, I want to say also one word about the, the foundations for StartNet because um, StartNet is not something that starts out of thin air, but it actually lies on, on, on what we call the Stark stack. Um, and it's a, a, a software stack that is in production for the last two years. Um, and this is what actually allows us to, to, to write a StarkNet. So first of all, Cairo. Cairo is um, a Turing complete language uh, that allows um, writing programs that, uh, and then generate proofs to them. And basically every product uh, on, on mainnet since uh, July last year uh, that we've built is written with Cairo. Um, and StarkNet is also written in Cairo and contracts in StarkNet are also written in Cairo. Um, the Stark Provers is, as I've said, the most powerful provers in the world. Um, we're able to generate proofs to uh, hundreds of cases of transactions. Um, and the way to improve them, I mean, there, and then there is also still many ways to improve them. And the beauty is that since we develop them in-house, um, we can also take the technology and, and, and bring it to the limit. And lastly, the StarkX, which is the technology that the YDX um, from our prologue uses. Um, and StarkX is, is, first of all, was our way to, 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 to see and to build an actual ZK wallet application in production and see that it scales and that it works. Um, and, and it was the, 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 basic for, the basis for, for, for expanding it to StarkNet. Um, yeah, and lastly, our roadmap. So we have the foundation, as I've said, we have the alpha, which is live for already uh, uh, two months and will be updated. The next update to the alpha will happen, I think by the end of August in four months, in four weeks, maybe five weeks. And what it will add is it, it will add contract interaction, meaning we'll be able to uh, uh, have composability on StarkNet, which is very exciting in my opinion, because it will be 
the last barrier for uh, uh, implementing any application that we have today on Ethereum. Um, and then we have uh, Constellations, which is uh, the first mainnet deployment and we uh, expect it to be on mainnet by the end of the year. Um, this deployment will be with uh, a, sing a single sequencer and universe, which is basically uh, to this, uh, the next step, which will decentralize the sequencer layer. Uh, we plan to have it by the mid of next year. Um, yeah, and now, I mean, now you know everything that you need to know in order to uh, uh, to proceed to the demo uh, with Alon, uh, which will be uh, very, very nice because uh, you'll be able to see the, the full cycle of uh, writing a smart contract, deploying it uh, and using it. And again, thank you very much. Um, uh, we'll have a, a short time at the end for questions. And, and I'm waiting to see you building on StarkNet.